going on guys Matt with MotoWorks here and in today's video we're going to talk about the Chrysler 300 lightning bolt in parentheses all right now some of you have had questions on it uh, on the 300 Facebook page that I am a part of and you kind of want to know what it is and what causes it uh, in this video I'm going to go over the cause and I'm going to go over uh, how I fixed it on my Chrysler 300. Uh, again, this was my experience, so yours may differ, but hopefully this video helps guide you in the right direction uh, so you can get your personal uh, vehicle fixed. Um, now, what is this lightning bolt? Um, basically, all that is, is I have a little bit of literature here so you guys can read it. Um, now, I'm not going to post it up for a while, long time. You can obviously pause the screen and read through it if you'd like uh, but uh, basically uh, to summarize what it's saying is that light will come on when the ECU detects a problem with the throttle body now it could just be a temporary glitch where the throttle pedal and the throttle body uh, didn't communicate properly um, basically your throttle position is monitored as well as your throttle body is monitored by the ECU um, and then the light will come up if there is either a break in communication between the two or you have possibly some type of engine issue now on my uh, car it was actually pretty easy to diagnose the situation uh, because when my uh, throttle body light came on the check engine light also came on. If you just get the throttle body light to come on, the any engine scanner uh, you hook up to it, uh, unless it's a Chrysler specific uh, scanner, which I think theirs is probably a little bit more advanced than the ones you can buy. Um, if you hook up just a scanner to it, it will come up with no code because that's only a communication between the ECU and the instrument cluster. All right, so if you have that light come up and you hook a scanner up to it, a lot of times you have to cycle the key first to get the uh, code reader to actually link up with your car. So as soon as you turn the key off, that throttle body light goes away until the ECU detects a problem again in the system. So that's number one, that's the first thing you're gonna run into that's gonna give you an issue there. Um, and if you happen to have a good scanner that does uh, freeze data and data logs, you could potentially pick it up on that. But again, I don't think it goes into that level of detail on a, a scanner that you can buy. I think the Chrysler one might pick that up. So a dealership might have better luck at getting it. But um, either way, if you have that come on, there's definitely an issue with the throttle body because that light is only telling you there's something wrong with the throttle body in some form or fashion. Now, when it happened to me, I lost all power, so I had, I went from pedal pressure, well, what feels like pedal pressure, I went from having power to completely bricked. I mean, it, it died off, it didn't matter if I had full throttle, half throttle, it just had no power uh, for about three to five seconds, and then all of a sudden it came back, suddenly. So there is a backup built into it to some effect to actually get you off the road it'll put it into some type of limp mode for you so don't freak out if it happens you should still have some type of pedal eventually but you want to get close to the side of the road if it happens and a lot of times you just cycle the key turn the key back on and if there's just a, if there's just a glitch it'll come back and you'll have throttle you know like normal until that light comes back on again um, but that's kind of the throttle by, that's kind of explaining that light a little bit. Now let's go into what my car actually did. Um, now I did flash a tune into this. So I flashed a tune and then about two weeks later I was gonna start filming a before and after video of the tune I flashed in. Uh, and then I had an issue with that throttle body light coming on. Now the first symptom I had was my idle was up at about 1200 to 1500 RPM 
uh, with it in park. When I put it in drive, it actually would creep forward. Um, so that was the first symptom I had. I still didn't have a light, I just had that symptom. So of course I unflashed my ECU and the problem still ensued, so I knew it had nothing to do with the tune I just put into my car. So I drove it, I drove it for a while, again, cycling the key. Every time the light would come on, I'd pull off to the side of the road, cycle the key, cycle it back on. It would go away for a while, then it would come back. Uh, until one day, eventually, it actually threw a check engine light, which for me was good because now I had an idea of what was going on. Uh, and the check engine light, the code was uh, idle air control valve circuit um, was idling too high, possible vacuum leak. So I knew that this car doesn't actually have an idle control circuit. It just has the throttle body that controls your idle control. So I knew that the throttle body was bad at that point. So here's the video of how I replaced that. Uh, so check it out if, if you want to know how to replace your throttle body. Once I replaced the throttle body, I had no problems. Now I've driven this car about 3,000 miles since I've replaced the throttle body and I haven't had one single issue with the car. It idles perfectly and it, it takes throttle, it, it's fine. I reflashed the tune in and I've had no problems since. Now one thing I will tell you, um, do not get an aftermarket throttle body. Do not buy a throttle body from a junkyard. Get the Mopar, Chrysler, get the OEM throttle body because for me, I like to put OEM parts on. Yeah, they, people say they're junky, but at the same time, this car went 126,000 miles and now just finally needed a throttle body. Uh, so I've heard horror stories of people buying two, three, four throttle bodies aftermarket and having the same issue then until they finally went and got the, the OEM one and the issue was gone. So hopefully this video is helpful. I see it's taken a little long. That's about seven minutes right now on the camera. So I'm gonna end it off here, guys. I hope it helps you. Thanks for checking this video out, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Uh, if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. Uh, leave a comment for any other videos you'd like to see. Uh, and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I'm Matt, this is Motorworks. We'll see you in the next video.